Hi, this is Janet. And Joe. With Grow Shop. And welcome to our video series on gear motor basics. We know selecting a gear motor can be problematic. Which do you choose first, the reducer or the motor? How do you know which motor types can work with which gear boxes and so on? Our goal with this video series is to equip you with the information and tools you need to match gearboxes and motors. Along the way, we'll show you the impact a proper match has on gear motor performance. Whether you're in the early design stages or are making sure the gear motor in your product is the right one for the job, by the end of this nine part series, you'll be confidently selecting gear motors. For this series, we'll review gear motor basics and discuss the three common reducer types, their construction, characteristics, advantages, and disadvantages. Then using this foundation, we'll dive into two different methods of selecting a gear motor and highlight the common mistakes in the gear motor selection process. We'll wrap up the series with several examples of real applications to demonstrate the concepts we cover. So let's get started with a quick overview of motors and the rationale behind gear motors. If you're in the need of more in-depth motor training, check out the link below for our video series, How to Choose an Electric Motor. The purpose of a motor, regardless of the application, is to change electrical power to mechanical power. No matter the motor type, the electrical to mechanical power conversion is achieved by inputting an electrical current to create attracting magnetic fields that induce rotation of the motor shaft. This rotation provides the torque needed to move or hold the load. We'll be focusing on three motor types for this series, the permanent magnet DC, AC induction, and brushless DC motors. You'll notice that we aren't addressing stepper and servo motors, which are related more specifically to positioning applications. And this video series is designed for general motion requirements. We've created this chart to quickly compare the motor types we're discussing and provide a starting point when you have an application in mind. The chart compares motors of roughly the same physical size and differentiates the motor types by speed, horsepower rating, and efficiency, life and noise ratings, and starting torque. You can download the chart using the link below. When selecting a motor for an application, you'll first determine which criteria are the most important for the application and make your motor selection accordingly. We'll cover this in more detail in later videos. Once the motor is selected, you'll need to consider the motor's size versus its relationship to the desired speed and output torque of the application as this influences reducer selection. Let's look deeper at this concept. We've graphed the speed in RPM that would be required for a range of different motor sizes to achieve an output of 200 watts. As you can see, you would need a roughly 500 cubic inch motor at the speed of 1000 RPM to achieve 200 watts of output. Imagine the size motor you would need to run at 100 RPM and achieve 200 watts output. It would be the size of a house. Basically, the slower the motor speed, the larger the motor needs to be. Large motors can be expensive and may not fit the envelope specified for an application. The alternative solution is to pair a gear reducer with a smaller motor. The sweet spot that's indicated on the curve is the point where motor size versus speed is optimized. Using a gearbox with the motor enables the smaller motor to operate in that zone. Keep watching as we begin our discussion of gearbox types in the next three videos. First up, parallel shaft reducers. Remember to check out the links below for the resources from this video, and if you want to dive deeper into motors, check out our series on how to choose an electric motor. For more information about GrowShop or any of our products, check out our website at www.growshop.com.